The Silent Stalker isn't so silent. As you look at the new Hasbro G.I. Joe classified series, Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins Snake Eyes. G.I. Joe Classified Series is loaded with iconic personalities from the epic history of the G.I. Joe franchise. These fan-favorite characters are presented in 6-inch scale with premium detailing, packaging, and accessories with advanced articulation that raises the vibrant heroes and villains of G.I. Joe to the next level. With robust roster of G.I. Joe and Cobra characters, the Classified Series of G.I. Joe action figures pays homage to the past while embracing the modern for G.I. Joe fans new, old, and in-between. Now, before we delve deeper into the Snake Eyes figure, obviously the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the brand new Snake Eyes movie figure is from the G.I. Joe Classified series. To do this, I can't just simply talk about it. I'm going to have to do some actions. My actions will be taking my tape measure, measure it right to the very top of his head. I'm going to stop it right there. The brand new Snake Eyes stands 6.2 inches in height. Quickly, quickly switching that over to centimeters. The figure is 15.8 about 16 centimeters in height. Though no firearms come included with the figure, Snake Eyes at least gets a set of blades and a longer sword as well. Starting first with the smaller daggers. They're not really quite even daggers even. They're almost like little small knives. It has some really nice detailing done to the knife itself. Something that you would almost even overlook unless you see it up close and personal like this. Immediately, I just first thought that it was just paint splattered across the blade, but until looking at it up close like this, you can see there's really a lot of interesting details that they've sculpted on both sides of the blade. Yes, both sides of the blade, as you can see right there. Of course, they're just traditional handles, as you can see with the guard there around the front, and these just fit into his hand. Let's go ahead and take the figure right now. Interesting thing about the figure's hands, though, specifically this hand right here, it looks like it's supposed to be designated for a gun some sort of firearm but like i said the figure doesn't come included with them but we can go ahead and take the small little small knives and fit them into his hand just kind of wedge them in between his fingers and his palm and then from there you can actually run the guard just around to the front of the fingers just like that we can do the exact same thing on the other side one one actually one thing i wanted to mention about these two is there's no there doesn't seem to be a place anywhere on the figure that houses them sure while he does have the shoulder bandolier that goes around his torso and does then allow the sheath of the sword to attach to the back. I can't seem to find, like I said, a place where these should attach to him. There's no pegs, there's no clips, there's nothing. So either you can have it displayed in his hands, or you're just going to have to leave them off for the time being. Let's actually just leave this one off for the time being. We'll leave the other one in his hand for right now. Put the figure down. He does come also included with a very nice, interesting, almost looks like a katana blade. Now the blade itself... As you can see, up close and personal like this, does have some really nice paint finish. The nice silver work use. Uh, it's nice silver that they've applied to it. I thought on the very end of it, further down here, was the Arashikagi logo. But actually, no, in fact, that's just the top of the guard. It's painted here in gold. The handle, as you can see, looks quite good as well. Really nice sculpted hilt painted in a shiny black finish. Now, the sword, unlike the smaller blades, actually fits inside a sheath. You can see right here. This actually has some nice additional gold, a continuation from the bottom of the blade right there. This just simply fits down into it. It's obviously a designated way that it's going to go. You can't take the blade and flip it around the other way. That's ridiculous. That's not going to fit. But again, follow the shape, the contour of it, and it'll slide perfectly into the sheath right there. And you can see there's a peg hole on the back of that. So you probably already see where this is going to be going. Spin the figure around and locate it on the back is a hole in his torso. You have to line up, though, the bandolier so that if you don't, well, you can see like the hole isn't, you're not going to be able to fit that in. So first you want to line things up. I know I'm kind of stating the obvious. Go ahead and take that and then take the sheath and fit it into place. One good thing though is the bandolier does flop around a lot. So providing once you get that in place, it sort of in a way helps to aid keeping everything from shifting around on you. And you can display the figure like that. The last of the accessories that come included with all snakes here is it comes with a swappable head sculpt. Now, while he's not blonde, and he certainly is speaking, it seems, in the movie, it's not a bad-looking likeness of the actor Henry Golding, who actually plays him in the movie. 
He's got some, as you can see, some stubble there on his face. There we go. Get that to focus in. Not too bad stubble when it comes to the paint that they applied to his face. The face, for the most part, is pretty good. Pretty good. I won't likely display the figure with the alternate swappable head sculpt, but of course, for the purpose of this review, let's just go ahead and take that off his back for right now. And let's go ahead and just take the head off the ball joint. One thing I was really surprised to see is that they used a very large ball joint. Let's go ahead and take the swappable unmasked head sculpt and we'll just fit that onto the ball joint. Pressure may be required to get that onto the ball joint. There we go. You got this head sculpt right here. In both the cases, and I'll talk probably more about that when we replace the head sculpt, I feel like both the heads are way too big. That's one of my, certainly one of my first takeaways from this figure is I feel like the head sculpts are way too big. Snake Eyes is bigger of the two, or the masked Snake Eyes, my favorite of the two, is a lot, is a lot bigger than the unmasked head sculpt. But I guess if you do want to have him unmasked, there's that option available. I just, it's, it's just so strange to see Snake Eyes unmasked like this, and certainly looking like this as well. Let's go ahead and pop the head off, and then we'll go ahead and replace it with the masked head sculpt again. Again, let's just put a little bit of pressure there onto the ball joint. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like the head sculpt, my first takeaway, as soon as I actually took the figure right out of the packaging, was the first thing I noticed about the figure was the head sculpt seems way too big. Both of the head sculpts seem too big, but the head, the one that's masked, seems the bigger of the two. Anyways, let's put that to the side for the time being. And I, while we're at it, let's just take this out of his hand as well, because I feel like it's going to get in the way of things. Here we go. Looking at the figure itself, first starting with the, the more classic looking iconic head sculpt for Snake Eyes. Of course, you've got the visor going across the front there. Though most of the figure is really black, there's a lot of it being used here. At least the texturing does change on it, so there's still something to look at. It's just not a big glossy mess of black. In fact, looking up close and personal, you can really see some nice looking detailing that they did to both the faces as well as the rest of his body but you're really going to be getting a lot of black on top of black on top of black. One nice thing that they did do though, especially when you're seeing it from the torso side of things that they made the torso more of a matte finish. And then the things like his arms, for example, are more of a shinier black. Of course, on the side, you got the Arishikagi. It's always a tough thing to say the logo there on the side of his arm. And that looks like it's been painted pretty good. I probably, I'm guessing they probably just pr printed that onto his forearm onto his bicep area there. Nice detail though, like I said, on the figure itself. A little bit of silver there on his belt, and then there are a few little areas that actually has some additional red on there as well. So again, it's not just all black, but so much of the figure is it, but at least it does have some really nice detailing. Honestly, the only real critique I can make about the figure legitimately is the fact that I feel like the head sculpt is just so super big for the rest of his body. The body proportions are actually pretty good. When you're looking at it, it looks like a naturally defined body. It doesn't look like an action figure necessarily where you've got big, blocky, bulky shoulders sort of planted into the side of the torso. Like it looks like it's got a nice form to it. So I think like they really nailed a good looking body for Snake Eyes. Now, of course, when it comes to the articulation on the figure, let's have a look at that right now. His head rotates not only just on the top of the neck, so that rotates all the way around, up, down, and all the... Th Things that would go along with the ball joint, of course. But then at the base of the neck, too, a little probably harder to see, it does have a secondary ball joint that allows the neck to move back and forth, up and down, and all the things that would go along with that. He does have a collar piece. You can probably see it on either side right there. It does limit a little bit of the articula uh, articulation when it comes to moving the neck back and forth. It's going to sort of hit to the sides of the collar piece. But again, all the front, forward, and back action, you can still get quite a lot going on here. Uh, for the shoulders, the shoulders hinge out. This one size a little tighter, I've noticed, than this side right here. You can move the arms, all, of course, all the way around. You do this all day, really, if you wanted to. Okay, let's stop there. Uh, he does have a swivel in the bicep. Just actually underneath the Arishikage. I want to keep saying that, hopefully correctly. He does have a double hinge on the elbow. And then he does have the articulation in the hand, which swivels all the way around and hinges back and forth. Again, one last look at the texturing that they've done to it. See so yeah, how like the forearm isn't quite, well, it's more of a matte finish. And then it's more glossier in the bicep 
and it's more of a matte finish there on the shoulder. So again, even though there is so much black being used on the figure, they break it up rather nicely by not only changing the texturing, but also changing the type of paint that they use as well. Let's get his arms straightened out. Upper torso is on a ball joint. I should say like the lower torso is on a ball joint. And then he does have the crunch. So it moves the torso forward as well. You can also hinge it backward as well. Great for limbo competing, I suppose. As for the legs, the legs split out quite easily. You can get a full Van Damme splits happening here with snake eyes. The legs go forward and back. Swivel on the top of the thigh and actually as well, you can drop the legs further down to give a little bit more mileage when it comes to moving those legs. And just make sure then you pop that back into the sockets, just like that. He has a swivel about three quarters of the way up the thigh. Snake Eyes also has a double hinge on the knee. And then for his feet, not only do you hinge him back and forth, but he does also have a nice, a rather nice swinging ankle pivot as well. I like also that they put the little cut on the bottom of his feet, just on the very end of his foot. Very, very traditional looking martial arts type style of footwear. Oh no, it's not a bad figure at all, really. I like the detailing. I like the paint on this figure. In fact, in fact, the only really critique I could probably have made is I would have shrunk his head down just a little bit. His head is way too big, especially like when you're looking at like now. Okay, well, actually, let's just move the head up just a little bit. Like when you're looking at right now, I feel like they probably should have shrunk the head down maybe a fifth the size or a quarter of the size, because especially when you're looking at like this. I just feel like the head sculpt is just a little too big for my liking. But all the rest of Snake Eyes come together to be a nice looking figure when you have it on display. I have already been asked if I'm planning to watch the G.I. Joe Origins Snake Eyes film, and of course I am. I love G.I. Joe. Probably not going to go out to the movie theater just yet to watch a movie, but certainly from the comfort of my own home. If it happens to pop up on demand, yeah, I'll give Snake Eyes a try and see if I actually like how they handled the character. For me, I, I know I sound like an old guy for saying this. For me, when I think of Snake Eyes, I think of a white guy with blonde hair that had no ability to speak. So really the idea of flipping that and changing up his backstory and already having the character speak in the film, I'm sure at some point they're going to explain how he loses his voice. But I know for the for the sake of this character, they wanted to update him, modernize him, make him a little bit more current to the times. And that doesn't bother me too much. But I just don't feel like Snake Eyes needs a backstory similar to my feelings about Solo, the Han Solo backstory. Did he really need an Origins? We already know what the character is, and we love the character for not having a lot of details of his past. Maybe by giving too much backstory of Snake Eyes, it may lose a little bit of the, the mystique, the allure of this character. Still, though, the fact that it has Snake Eyes in it, a Storm Shadow, a Baroness, and even Scarlet make appearances in this film, of course, yeah, I'm going to watch a popcorn G.I. Joe flick which apparently is going to be a springboard for a new G.I. Joe franchise, which I feel is long overdue. We already had The Rise of Cobra, and we had that other one starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. They were okay, but I definitely am looking forward to seeing a new G.I. Joe franchise surface, maybe as a result of Snake Eyes being a successful movie. We can only hope it's a successful movie. Speaking of successful things, I feel like this is a pretty successful-looking Snake Eyes. It has all the things that one would want to have Snake Eyes having even apparently a swappable head. I... Didn't think anybody really wanted Snake Eyes unmasked, but if you did want the way he looks in the film before, of course, he dons the mask, there's that. I feel like both the head sculpts, though, are a little too big. That's the only thing I would really critique this figure, honestly. The rest of the figure comes together rather nicely. It's just the heads are way too big. Even like this head sculpt, I feel like it's way too big for his shoulders. Either his shoulders are too small or his head is too big. I feel like the problem is more the size of the melon that's sitting on his neck. He does have some nice detailing. The Arashikagi logo, of course, on his arm. It had to be there, of course. Comes with some pretty good-looking weapons. Although, again, like when you're looking at the one hand, it looks like it's a trigger-firing finger. Well, not a firing finger off his hand, but the one that, of course, holds a trigger on a gun. Doesn't come in clue with any guns. He only comes in clue with knives and swords. And I guess if you really want to use him with a gun, you could probably pull that from a from one of the other classified series Snake Eyes that we've looked at in a previous review. Yeah, overall, I'm liking this Snake Eyes. Not really sure I like the idea of the character having a backstory film, and not really sure I like the idea of having a big giant head on his shoulders, but the rest of the Snake Eyes figure looks really nice on display. Have you picked up this figure for yourself? If so, let me know down below in the comments section. Is his head big? Is it just me? It might be just me. But weigh in your thoughts of what you guys think of the G.I. Joe classified series Snake Eyes, and weigh your thoughts in down below. 
What do you guys like the idea? Do you guys like the idea that we're getting a Snake Eyes backstory and the fact that this character is talking in the film? I'm sure they're going to explain it. I hope they're going to explain it. If you guys are new, though, to this channel, didn't mean to startle you there for a second, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on, and make sure that you're also coming back to this channel, because even though we've wrapped up the G.I. Joe Origins Snake Eyes, reviews of both Storm Shadow and the Baroness will be coming up shortly, so make sure you keep your peepers peeled for that. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.